Holly Rivera, executive yeah. chef of the Moose Cafe, joins us this morning with some backyard grilling tips. And she's going to show us how to prepare a grilled tuna gourmet sandwich. Boy, that looks good already, even raw. So, Valerie, <laughs> tell me, I mean, explain this. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we don't I have a grill. I thought this was dangerous. So <laughs> so it's like, we don't have a grill, so we're going to uh, improvise here. Mm -hmm. This is a, I'm roasting a pepper. Um, simply sprayed it with a little bit of uh, pan release spray, your regular Pam, Wesson, that type of thing, vegetable spray. And I'm just roasting it over the fire in order to peel it. Wow. Um, and it just helps peel the skin and also gives it a nice flavor, a nice roasted flavor. And you can do this directly on your grill top. Wow. Yeah. Okay, great. Or you can improvise Or like improvise this. and yeah. do this in your house. Okay, <laughs> now what are we doing here? Um, well, being that we don't have a grill here, <laughs> we have to kind of improvise. And uh, what we're going to do is just I've taken some tuna mm -hmm. and marinated it. And mm -hmm. the marinade is simply, and I was going to indicate to people that if you're grilling, what you need to do is um, if you want the flavor internally in your meat or your fish, you need to marinate it um, fully, rather than just coating the outside of it like you would barbecue sauce. How long sauce. should you marinate it? Um, usually a couple hours is good. Okay. Um, overnight is always great, too. Mm -hmm. And I've got some garlic and some herbs okay. that I'm going to put in here. Oh, it smells so good. I wish we had smell-o-vision. <laughs> mm. And what you'll do is just want to marinate that in your meat in there. I've already got the tuna marinated, of course, because mm -hmm. um, it, it was marinated several hours. This helps to get the flavor all the way inside of your product, whether okay. it's meat, fish, etc. Okay. Okay, and you're just doing a simple marinade of um, soy sauce, garlic, and fresh herbs. Okay. That's it. All right. So you're not adding any, any extra fat or anything else. Okay, like and we've already done that, we've so already now we're ready we to... Done. Right. Mm -hmm. And now what I'm going to do is simply place this in here, and you want to make sure your grill is a nice grilling tip. Make sure your grill is nice and hot. Okay. I, I think it's nice and hot. This That's is nice sure. and hot. <laughs> I can feel the heat. Can feel okay. the heat. <laughs> All right. Can't stand the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Ah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and what you want to do also is remember the longer your item is um, over the heat being cooked, the less moisture you're you're going to have inside that item. Mm -hmm. You're extracting moisture in order to cook it. Okay. So you don't want to leave it there. Right. Obviously, too. Long. Right. Exactly. So how long does it take to do tuna? Uh, this tuna is um, normally served medium rare to medium. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not a person that likes it medium rare, then, you know, medium to medium well is fine. You just don't want to overcook it because it will get dry. Really? And how long are you going to... Within seconds. Within It'll be seconds. Ready. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And I've made, a, running out yeah, of time. I've made a sauce here of soy sauce, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of mayonnaise and herbs. Mm -hmm. And all I'm going to do is coat that on there. Shredded lettuce. Ooh, it smells good. <laughs> And these are the roasted peppers okay. that we've got here. All right. Our tuna is almost ready. Turn it over. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it can be served either on a salad or it can be served um, on a sandwich. And we want to say that you can get this at Moose Cafe. You can get this at the Moose Cafe, All but right. it is grilled at the Moose Cafe. All right. We I'm have about a minute that. left. And Okay, great. And we're just going to cut that. Since this is a, this is a little bit rare, but we want to just show everyone what it looks like. Or okay. you can serve it on a plate of mixed greens. Either okay. way. Mm -hmm. um, but it has an, it's very light. It's, um, and if you're doing it on the grill, you wouldn't need the oil. Okay. I'm doing it in a pan, so I do need the oil, unless I was using something like Teflon. So you can improvise. Stick. If oh, yeah. you don't have a grill, you can roast your pepper. Right, uh, inside. Inside. And mm -hmm. then you can also use a pan, and you just used a little bit of oil. Very little. Okay, and your yeah. mayo mixture was, you, I guess you can use low-fat mayo, low soy. Low-fat mayo, mm -hmm. okay. soy sauce, and a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of mixed herbs. Okay, great. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. No problem. Uh, coming up in our second half hour of the Spirit of Texas this morning, Valerie will prepare a summer fruit dessert, so she's not going away. Nope. And we'll tell you how to get her recipes. We'll be joined by a NASA scientist to discuss the Mars Pathfinder and what its discoveries could mean to us. Plus car expert Scotty Kilmer and the Movie Moms Review. So don't you go away. We're going to eat, though. <laughs> this is great. It smells Our next guest is the executive chef of one of Houston's hottest new restaurants. We're delighted to welcome Valerie Rivera from the Moose Cafe. Welcome, Valerie. Thank you. And what are we going to be doing today? Uh, just beer plank salmon. I'm going to do some vegetables to go along with it. What's unique about the salmon? Uh, the salmon 
is from the Pacific Northwest, and uh, basically the unique, most unique thing is it's cooked on the salmon plank. Oh, okay. The salmon plank is oiled, and then um, you put whatever vegetables, fish, or any other type of meat you want to use, and just cook it straight on there. And usually you cook it with these types of potatoes. Right, I've just got thin sliced potatoes that I sliced on the mandolin here, and then um, fresh salmon cuts that have been dry marinated in place. Around. Is this like a favorite dish because you guys were chosen the people's choice? Yeah, for right. sure. And is also, this like uh, a favorite dish there? This is actually my signature dish. I started there a couple of months ago and it's one of my signature dishes I've brought over there and redone the menu. Great, so great. So it's been very popular. So you start, tell me what you're doing now. Tell me I'm how you're doing. I'm just sauteing some garlic and shallot. Okay. Um, can it put some sauteing some zucchini? Okay. So it's really good zucchini. And I see tomatoes also. Right, I've got some smoked tomatoes. Um, the Moose Cafe is uh, known for Pacific Northwestern food, and the main difference in Pacific Northwestern is that we do a lot of smoking items. Um, they do a lot of smoking to preserve fish and preserve vegetables, mm -hmm. so we smoke tomatoes, and um, I've just got them in here, tossed with the zucchini and garlic. Okay. Got a little bit of flavor, and you can tell them the smell of the oh, smoke in it. Great. Already, so it's really cold nice. up there, so. Yeah, it is. Can you smoke fish at home? Uh, you can. You can either, uh, these dishes actually are, are smoked from the cedar smoke rising above and, and seeping into the uh, fish. Um, or you can get a, really just a cookie sheet. Bottom of it have uh, wood chips in it. Light those on fire, get those going, and then cover it, smolder it out, and smoke from it will smoke inside your oven. Okay, that's great. Without, yeah. without any danger. Or of course you can use a smoker outside. So anybody who's watching this can actually do it at home? Oh yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, these are the cedar planks, and actually in the Pacific Northwest, they take the whole fish and nail it to the board and hold the board up to the fire and oh, cook it against that. Oh, my gosh. So, it's quite unique. So, now we do... Now I'm just going to... Hopefully that's no problem. Put the zucchini on there. Mmm, I can't wait. That's okay. really good. <laughs> And besides these types of vegetables, what other ones would you suggest to um, that people don't like zucchini, for example? Carrots, or carrots, okay. uh, you could even do mashed potatoes on it um, without a problem. Um, really anything, anything that's going to, that you put in the oven, though, needs to be more like a, a hearty vegetable that's not just going to turn to mush. Okay. That's why I don't have the zucchini in there. I wanted the flavor to seep into the potatoes through the wood and then add additional flavor by topping it with also the zucchini. So you could use carrots and actually put them on there. Um, any type of vegetables that you would like skewer and barbecue type things, right. onions, okay. uh, carrots, celery, um, just root vegetables are really nice. And a good question, how do you, how do you choose your salmon? How do you know if it's a good salmon or not? Uh, just the basic way to do it is to get a fresh fish that is, um, the eyes are clear, mm -hmm. the gills are pink, and, uh, usually safe, that's your safe bet, and it's going to be a nice, nice pink color. Okay. And the flesh will not be broken because if the flesh is broken, that means it has been overhandled. Oh, okay. Okay, and you don't want too much brown because you don't want too much fat in it. It is an oil, one of the oilier fish, but and some is very healthy, right? It is. It is. Um, during one of the re recent research, uh, they said that this type of oil in the salmon is is one of the healthier types. So if you're going to eat if you're going to eat something with oil in it. Your best bet. And it's great for cancer prevention, I hear all Yes, time. exactly. And now, what are you putting on there now? This is a rice wine vinegar and tarragon mernaise. Rice wow. wine? What kind of wine? White wine? Uh, it has it looks white wine. almost done. I decided to come oh, to you. Oh, no, I thought it was all for me. <laughs> Dream on. <laughs> I've heard you all the hard work, right? Yeah, well, I told you guys you could cook my dinner, and then I'd come over here and see how it was going. So now, are these the most popular dishes you have in your restaurant? This is the one fish? of the most popular dish. Uh, between this and the Canadian plate, which is um, kind of European, it's salad, mashed potatoes, and grilled tenderloin. It's got to be the most famous. I mean, it's just everybody's ordering it. Really? Yeah. And we have just, um, our recent uh, election for an Esquire, a top new restaurant in America. Mm -hmm. Okay, now really people skyrocketed. are watching at home mm -hmm. and they're saying, okay, I kind of got this, but how do I smoke again at home? Because that seems like an odd time. Uh, that is a, you just get like a cookie dish, a deep, like two inch cookie dish, mm -hmm. and um, sheet pan type thing, or a casserole pan. Uh, wood chips, mm -hmm. this is if you don't have a barbecue pit outside that you're going to smoke in. Right. Put the chips in the bottom, get them smoldering hot, and those will release smoke, and they will not go out completely unless you put water on them. So they'll just keep smoldering. Oven on, oven off? Oven on. At say 350, 375 the whole okay. time. Okay. Um, for a quicker result, you want to do it at 450. I place this in the oven at 450 and mm -hmm. it releases the heat from the wood. 
and smokes okay. it up. So, do you worry about drying out? No, they're oiled. I oil the oil the pans, um, the, the the wood. Um, you can oil it prior to cooking okay. it, and they're heated each time, so they're they're sanitary because they are heated um, 450 up to 450 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes, okay. and then placed in the oven at the same temperature. So are we just gonna taste it, or are we just gonna look at it all day? <laughs> <laughs> We're that going to have any silverware, so well, he's very direct. Well, we'll go for it anyway. Okay. We'll try it with the big you spoon. Go. You get to go first. How about oh, that? Oh, I can't Because you cooked it. Mm. Now, here you go. Okay. There okay. you go. Let's try. Ready? Mm. And while she's eating, I'm going to say that's our show for tonight. So we'll see you tomorrow when B.B. Burns will look at small business opportunities in Houston. And now I get to eat. And that was great. <laughs> and we'll examine the effectiveness of charter schools. So join us for those stories and more tomorrow night on Weeknight Edition. I'm Patricia Groff. Good night. Good night.